everybody, and early Happy New Year to you, and welcome to the Campbell Center in Aldine in Houston, Texas, where we're going to bring you tournament basketball today. Your Fort Bend Elkins Knights taking on the Crosby Cougars in the third place game of the Vipe Invitational Tournament. This is VipeFortBend.com. I'm Roger Smith. Glad you're with us, and it's time to bring you one of the final countdown to tip-off shows of 2021, although we do have more basketball. We have more games one tomorrow and two more on Friday, and we'll tell you about that one as our broadcast continues. But first, let's get things set up for you as Crosby, a very high-quality Class 5A team. In fact, one that knocked Hightower out of the 5A playoffs last year is taking on an Elkins Knights team that really has a very good chance to make some noise in the Class 6A playoffs. We'll talk to Albert Thomas, the very wise longtime head coach of the Elkins Knights, when we bring you the countdown to tip-off and we'll be back with that right after this. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday. From Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome to the Countdown to Tip-Off show, and a good Wednesday afternoon to you. We're here to bring you the action between the Elkins Knights and the Crosby Cougars, and it's time to talk to Albert Thomas, head coach of the Knights. This Vipe Invitational Tournament is a really good test. See a lot of good quality teams. What has your team shown you up to now? Well, they've shown they have a willingness to fight, um, that they're trying to come together as a team, trying to uh, continue to build chemistry, um, leading into our district, our uh, resumption of our district season. So uh, we're glad to be in a tournament like this, which gives us a good opportunity to gain back some chemistry maybe we lost over the Christmas holidays. Now, what I'm thinking about as I see this game coming up against Crosby, you know, I think in the sports fans heaven, everybody's going to get a media room where they can answer all of the sports what ifs that could have been true. Because I look back to January and February of 2019, P.J. Haggerty was in District 26A playing for Ridgepoint. Now he plays for Crosby. Um, can you imagine? how much even more interesting than it is District 26A would be if he had not made that move. Oh, definitely. He's a game changer uh, in so many different ways. So uh, he would have just given, you know, already a good Ridge Point group uh, another weapon. So uh, <laughs> needless to say, to a certain extent, you're kind of glad that he's not in your district any longer. Have you had a chance to kind of watch him in the earlier games of this tournament? And can you compare him right now as a senior to what he was as a freshman? I haven't had an opportunity to watch him much. Uh, the way the tournament was set up, we're in different uh, venues when we played, so I didn't get a chance to see him. But I've, I've, I've watched him play, you know, uh, during the summer months, during the fall months, and uh, he's you know, grown tremendously in his game. Uh, back then he was just really, a, really um, a, a thin shooter. Now his offensive game has developed. Uh, he's put on weight, some strength and everything like that. And so he's uh, a much better player. He just continued to develop as he's gone along. By the way, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, and I realize this tournament is played on multiple courts. So you, do, you can't be everywhere, and uh, that's what I tell people about why I, I can't broadcast every game. I can't be everywhere. And let's talk about your team. At this point, you've played one district game. You're kind of dipping your toes back into the tournament play for a little bit before you go district all the way. Do you absolutely have your rotation set? Is there anybody else that you're still kind of evaluating to see if you want to have them in the regular rotation? It's a constant evolution. Uh, with uh, teenagers, you have all kinds of things that come up. Uh, people being absent because of vacation, people being absent because of sickness. Uh, and so 
um, the full rotation hasn't developed all the way. Uh, it's partially there. We have someone who was in the rotation beginning to take a step in the rotation who is now out due to COVID. So now we had to readjust again. And so it's just a constant uh, adjust and readjust. But it's part of coaching high school basketball, so you understand what goes with that. Well, I always like to listen to you talk about your thoughts and, and your ways of doing things. I mean, I've, I've never been a coach, so I just I try to learn as much as I can. But it seems like what you describe creates that culture of competition. You never want everybody to say, well, I got my spot, and, and I don't need to keep trying hard to keep it. Absolutely. And uh, you want those who are not in the rotation to keep battling to gain a spot in the rotation. Um, because competition and practice is what um, prepares you for game type situations. All right, well thank you Albert Thomas and an early Happy New Year to you. It's going to be great watching your team in District 26A. You know, it's kind of the usual suspects I think. Your ball club plus Bush, Ridgepoint and Travis and somebody else is going to try to elbow their way into the party and knock somebody else out. I think it's going to be fun. Definitely, it's going to be competitive once again as it always is. All right, we'll have the Elkins Knights and Crosby Cougars coming up for you on VibeFortBend.com. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. All right, we are underway from the Campbell Center. Elkins against Crosby, and Crosby wearing the white uniforms. They are the home team. They control the opening tap with Sean Elkington there forward, but the first down time down the floor, they miss a shot, and Christopher Barnett rebounds for the Elkins Knights, and quickly down the floor, Jackson Fields chases a ball down in the right corner, then hands it off, and a three-pointer on the way, and good. That's Ashton McKenzie, six-foot senior guard, and the Knights get on the board first, Three to nothing over these Crosby Cougars. So it is Zacchaeus Davis who handles the ball at point guard. Now it is Davis moving around trying to get loose and a steal by Ashton McKenzie. Gets it to Chris Johnson. Entry pass. Quick shot by Barnett. Christopher Barnett, 6'5", junior forward, bangs one in. And that makes it five to nothing. P.J. Haggerty, the guy that was talked about in the countdown to tip-off show, wears number four, and he's not in the starting lineup for Crosby, but they do get their first hoop of the game from Zakia da Zacchaeus Davis. Chris Johnson brings it across the timeline, and now the Knights work the perimeter. They send it over to the left corner, and it's a near steal. Ball knocked out of bounds by Davis. I'm looking over at the Crosby bench to see if number four is suited up. But they're seated, and it's kind of hard to see that in this situation. McKenzie gives the ball off to Justin Mitchell, and now Jackson Fields takes a two-pointer just inside the arc on the right side, but a long rebound goes all the way out of bounds before anybody can track it down. So if you were tuning in, uh, this is full disclosure here, but... Uh, if you were tuning in to hear me describe the play of Sean Haggerty, well, he's he's not here, or not at least he's not playing. Put it that way. At this point, there's a lot of height on this Crosby team, and Austin Bones Jones goes in and loses the ball, and Chris Johnson steals it and goes all the way down the floor, and it's now a seven to two Knights lead as he went in one on none and was able to get the easy layup. Davis against Ashton McKenzie driving down the left side and a little scoop shot drew the foul and it's Ashton McKenzie who's going to be called for hacking him on the wrist. We have basketball throughout the week but that doesn't include Saturday because that of course is New Year's Day as Davis is at the free throw line for two shots. First one is up and rattles off no good. So on Thursday, that's tomorrow, 10.30 in the morning, we have girls basketball, the Austin girls taking on Aleph Hastings as the second free throw is missed. And then two games on New Year's Eve day. 
We'll have the Bush girls at 10.30 a.m. hosting Katie in a non-district game. And then the Travis Tigers hosting the, Elk, uh, the Seven Lakes boys in a non-district game. Shot on the way by Mitchell. He's hammered as he lets the ball go. And the foul will be called on Kevin Burks of Crosby. And that means that the diminutive, that means short for those of you in Rio Linda, the diminutive Justin Mitchell stands 5'8", but goes to the line. Just a sophomore, but short with the first free throw. It remains 7-2 to two nights, 5'18 to go in the first quarter. Yesterday, we had three ball games on VipeFortBend.com. Ridgepoint beat West Columbia in a morning game, then Kempner lost to Texas City. We had both of those as the second free throw is good. And by the way, it was a three-point attempt on which Justin Mitchell was fouled. So he gets three foul shots. He's made one out of two and one more to come. And then yesterday afternoon late, we had the Ridgepoint boys defeating Texas City. Third foul shot is no good, but a great save by Barnett. Gets it back onto the field of play, the court of play. But Davis comes up with it for Crosby. Elkington trying to make it a move near the top of the key. And Jackson Fields stole it away from him. And then to correct his mistake, Elkington reaches up and grabs Johnson, or grabs uh, Fields, I should say, so he doesn't streak down the court and get an easy two, if not a dunk. Our score is 8-2. to two. So... Knights inbounding the ball. Ashton McKenzie gets it into Mitchell. Mitchell running things, sends it to Johnson along the baseline from an impossible angle. A 12-point jumper and a thing of beauty. Rose up high, nice, silky, smooth release, and it's 10-2. Knights on top of the Crosby Cougars, who thus far are playing without P.J. Haggerty. And along the baseline, Barnett intimidating. Kevin Burks, the much smaller player, as he tried to go up and score. Now Johnson pulls up short of the three-point arc on the right wing, sends the ball to the left side. Now he gets it back. Now he's at the top of the key, sends it into the corner to Jackson Fields. Entry pass, Barnett kicks it back out and throws it away. Takes one bounce in front of the Crosby bench and then goes into the first row. But no worries. The Knights off to a good start here, leading by a score of 10-2 at the Campbell Center at Aldean. Crosby hopes to get back here for the Region 3 tournament. Davis yo-yoing the ball, moving to his left, backing in on McKenzie. Now he hands it off to Burks. And it's Davis and Burks for the most part. And now they get it in the hands of Anthony Trey Baldwin. Baldwin kills his dribble and gives the ball to Dylan Banks between the rings. Now it is a shot blocked by uh, Chris Johnson. It was from the left corner and Kevin Burks put up a three. It was blocked and it came down on the court within the boundary, but then it was knocked out by Crosby. So the Knights get it back. And we've just crossed the halfway threshold of the first quarter, and it's 10 to two. Elkins on top. Elkins has played one District 26A game, and they won that one. So they have a win along with Ridgepoint, Travis, and Bush. Chris Johnson driving down the left restraining line on the left side of the lane, and he's hacked on his way to the hoop, and he will go to the line. This Campbell Center is a great arena, but one thing that uh, they don't always keep up with is the, well, never mind. I was about to say something that wasn't true, so just I'm going to go another way with it. First free throw is good by Chris Johnson. And the second one also good, so it's 12-2, to two, Knights on top. Burks gives the ball to Davis. No pressure in the backcourt by the Knights. And there goes Davis all the way to the hoop. Nice floater, and he shot it over Jacoby Osborne. Six more sophomore forward for the Knights. Another good-looking player who's got a great future. Jackson Fields sends the ball in there to Osborne. Now they work it to the left. Spin move inside the free throw circle. Kick out to Todd Woods, who puts it up, and it's a three-pointer good. You got Todd Woods and Justin Mitchell, a couple of under six foot sophomore guards, but they play bigger than that. And that three pointer makes it 15 to four. Here goes Banks of Crosby. 
Now he gets the ball to Davis, who is trying to get away from Woods. Can't do it. Gives the ball to the bigger Trey Baldwin. He almost loses it. Has to kill his dribble and gives the ball off to Burks. Burks trying to find a shot. Can't find it. This Knights team is very quick and very long. Now they send it to the left corner. Austin Bones Jones missing the three-pointer. One and done. Rebound by Chris Johnson. He pulls up at the right wing. Now goes inside. Shot from the right elbow. In and out. And it's no good. And Barnett runs down the rebound. Kicks it back out to Johnson. Fakes a three and then feeds it inside to Jackson Fields for the easy two. Hold on just a second. And that makes it 17 to four and Crosby takes a timeout. We'll take it with him. This is VikeFortBend.com. We'll have more right after this. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity, 600 megabits per second to AT&T, 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Well, Crosby head coach Edwin Egan's didn't like what he saw, but uh, the numbers tell the story. 17 to four, the Elkins Knights off to a great start. And during that timeout, as we saw the Crosby Cougars stand up, they do not have Sean P.J. Haggerty with them. Haggerty was a freshman at Ridge Point and then transferred to Crosby. He's a senior now. He's a great player, one of the most coveted ones in the state. So here we go with Zacchaeus Davis controlling things and sends it to the left corner. Bones Jones puts it up, no good. And the rebound comes down to Jacoby Osborne and the Knights push it. Wood sends it to Johnson in the left corner. Started to pull the trigger on a three. Now goes all the way across the court. Ashton McKenzie, top of the key three, is no good. A fight for the rebound. Jeffrey Iro got a hand on it. And he was actually fouled. And that's why Iro was going down when he was reaching for the basketball. So it'll be Knights in possession. Inbounding from the baseline. Around the horn they go. Johnson fakes a three, drives in, behind the head pass, but it's stolen away by Dylan Banks of Crosby, but the Knights get it back. Johnson fouled as he goes up. Nice little head fake, got Trey Baldwin in the air, and when Baldwin came back down, Johnson was trying to go back up. And he'll get two. The missing P.J. Haggerty, by the way, is ranked number seven in the class of 22 by TexasHoops.com among seniors. First free throw is good. Jackson Fields of the Elkins Knights is ranked number 93, by the way. Chris Johnson is ranked number four in the class of 2023 by TexasHoops.com. Only one free throw good, 18 to four, Knights lead it. Down the middle of the lane, Kevin Burks now passes off in the corner, gets the ball to Baldwin. And a whistle inside and a foul on one of the Knights. And the foul is called on Jacoby Osborne. But it was on the floor and no foul shots resulting. It'll be Burks to inbound, slaps the basketball, gets it into Davis. Drives inside the three-point arc. Now they work the perimeter game. Banks pulls up, gives the ball to Davis, drives down the right side of the lane, and another floater. That's a beauty, and it goes in to make it 18-6. to six. Ilkins now on offense. Todd Woods, but it's a throwaway. Stolen by Davis and a left-handed layup. Goes in, and that closes the gap to 18-8. to eight. 
Chris Johnson now bringing it up on this particular possession. Hands the ball off to McKenzie. Now between the rings it is Iro. Gets it off to Johnson and fires one from the right wing. It's no good. And the rebound by Trey Baldwin of Crosby. No backcourt pressure this time by the Knights. And a pass tipped. Baldwin got control of it. Tough luck shot as it rolls out. But then it's Bones Jones putting it in. Austin Bones Jones. And they have that on the roster. It's not just something that I heard in the hallway, you know. 14 seconds left in the first quarter. 18 to 10 Knights. Johnson with a pass on the left wing. Sends it over there to Dodds. No good, but the rebound fought for. Iro has it, bounces it to Johnson. Long three on the way off the back iron, and that's the way the first quarter ends. 18 to 10. Elkins with the lead over the Crosby Cougars. We'll be back with more on VipeFortBend.com. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Vibefortbend.com coverage of Fort Bend County basketball is brought to you on this, the 29th day of December 2021 by, Aust by Xfinity, the future of awesome. I also almost said... Awesome, the future of Xfinity by First Tire and Automotive with four great Fort Bend County locations. Archer Volkswagen, who's ready to serve you, and also the Needville Insurance Agency. Back to live action. Jackson Fields inside the Barnett. A little quick assist where Jackson Fields went up high and just released the ball before he came back down right into the hands of Barnett for an easy two points, and that makes it 20 to 10. And now a block shot by Jackson Fields at one end. And here come the Knights on the run, but the ball stolen away by Zacchaeus Davis of Crosby. They were almost to the hoop, and then it got going back the other way. And now a pass off of the foot of Barnett goes out of bounds. So the Knights will continue to play defense underneath the goal to our left, the one at which Crosby is shooting. Burke slaps the basketball and gets it into Banks. Banks in the corner, guarded by McKenzie. Reroutes himself, and now it's a long three on the way. No good by Trey Baldwin. Ball ends up out of bounds, but Barnett had a foot out of bounds when he touched it. Kevin Burks to inbound. The Knights with a much taller team than Crosby. Jackson Fields guarding Baldwin. Baldwin dribbling to his left. Now he sends it to Davis. McKenzie on him. Between the rings, gets a pick. Now gives the ball back to Jones. And now there's a shot partially blocked by Fields. Fields blocking the jumper of Baldwin. And the Knights have it again. Quickly down the field, but there's Davis with a steal. And he was stomping his foot on the floor right by our microphone, and that's why you heard the static. It happens. Baldwin, or rather Jones, grabs a rebound and is fouled by one of the Knights. I think they'll get Barnett for it. And we've got a timeout called by Albert Thomas and the Elkins Knights. We'll be back with more on VibeFortBend.com. 20 to 10, 6.38 to go before halftime. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome Internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. 
Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 6 Restrictions apply. New connect internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Crosby inbounds, gets a shot up in the air. It's missed. A wild scramble for the loose ball. And then Jones goes up. Baldwin tries to follow. And finally, the Knights take possession. And it's their guard, Justin Mitchell, who gets it out of the traffic and starts the offense. McKenzie returns the ball to Mitchell. Now on the left wing, it is Fields. He sends the ball to Jaron Hardeman, who's just entered the game. Barnett underneath, out-dueling Baldwin and scoring. Nice little bounce pass that got him the ball right where he wanted it on the block, and he turned his shoulders and had the right position. It is now 22 to 10. Knights on top. Banks trying to drive in. Now it is Jones, goes cross court to Davis. McKenzie on Davis and giving him a hard time. Baldwin guarded by Fields. He's beyond the three point arc and then a bounce pass stolen away by McKenzie and he's bumped in the open court by Baldwin. That'll be a foul. And let's see how many that is on Baldwin. We have a substitution for Crosby as Darius Jefferson comes in. So that is the third foul already according to the scoreboard. Third foul already on Baldwin. And a quick inbounds entry pass, I should say, uh, off the hands of Barnett. Couldn't handle the hard pass from Jaron Hardeman. And let's see who came in. Nobody in the game for the Knights that has not been in yet. No, I, I stand corrected, or actually I, I'm seated, so I sit corrected. Van Lynch comes into the game, and he replaced Ashton McKenzie. Van Lynch, six-foot senior guard. Crosby bringing it up, Zacchaeus Davis. Getting some instructions from Coach Egan as he moves across the midcourt stripe, guarded by Iro. Gives the ball off to Banks. Now the guy that just came into the game, Darius Jefferson with the ball, and he gives it up. Now it's Davis trying to get free along the baseline. Fade away from 12 feet, no good. Rebound Jackson Fields. Bones is harassing him, but he gets out of there. Gets it to Chris Johnson. Looking at all his offensive options. Near the free throw line, hesitation move inside to Barnett. Ball gets away, taken away by Fields. Fields trying to find someone to open, and now he'll spread it out, and they will reset the offense. Chris Johnson drying the ball on his jersey. Quickly into Barnett. Turned around but did not get a good shot up. In fact, he had some resistance there from Kevin Burks. And Crosby has the basketball back. And there goes Banks in. No good fight for the rebound. Barnett has it. And I don't think they're going to call a held ball there, are they? Because if they do, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, because Austin Jones was reaching over the back. We're going to turn down our natural sound just a little bit for you there. You know, sometimes it can be too loud. And there's a timeout taken. We'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com, 22 to 10 nights. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of Savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. You heard the girl go to firsttireandauto.com and you can get coupons to save even more on the great services they provide and get the greatest deals on tires at firsttireandauto.com. They've got 
four great locations in Fort Bend County. They're all open Monday through Saturday. Jackson Fields with a one and one. Hits the first free throw, and that brings the score to 23 to 10 with 4.28 to go before halftime. And at halftime, we're going to have an interview with the content managing editor, Matt Malatesta of Vipe. And we'll talk about early National Signing Day and what might be ahead for the next National Signing Day. But a lot of business was done, and a lot will continue to be done because of the dreaded transfer portal. Well, I don't know that it's dreaded, but... You know, it is causing some some uh, some earthquake-like changes in high school and college athletics. Crosby gets the hoop. Nice floater by Zacchaeus Davis. Chris Johnson, spin inside the lane, gets it back to Jackson Fields, and a little finger roll off the window. So the lead is still 14 for the Knights. 26 to 12 is the advantage. Davis dribbling and guarded by Jacoby Osborne. Davis gets it back in the left corner. Jones fakes a long three. Now gets the ball to Kevin Burks. Burks to Davis. Now Osborne looking around, head on a swivel, thinking he might get picked. Banks gives the ball back to Davis near the top of the key. And it seems like Crosby is just having a hard time getting somebody free inside and getting anything other than an outside shot. Bounce pass to Jones. He's one of their big men, but he's over in the left corner. He goes all the way across the court to Darius Jefferson. Now deep in the corner. Burks loses the ball, and it's stolen away by Osborne in a two-hand jam at the right end of the floor. 28-12. to 12. The Knights really opening up a big lead. We're under three minutes to go before the halftime break. The Knights and all their other District 26A brethren will resume the district schedule next Wednesday, the 5th of January. And a three-pointer from the left corner. Dylan Banks rattling it home, but quickly down the field. Jackson, uh, down the court. Jackson Fields looks for the trailer, and he gets it to Osborne, who gets it to Van Lynch, who scores. Crosby trying to counter. Now down 30 to 15. And a nice shot by Kevin Burks, a little floater that bounced around three times on the rim before falling in. Chris Johnson at the right elbow, side to side dribble to get free. And a little short bank shot too hard. Rebound comes down to Crosby. There goes Davis, pulls up at the top of the key, sent it to the left corner. Three on the way and no good by Banks. Jones and Barnett fighting for the rebound. We get a little timeout here. Not a timeout, just a break in the action. So Jones goes out for Crosby. Baldwin comes in. And the Knights bring in Todd Woods. And I think he replaced Justin Mitchell. Zacchaeus Davis meets a trap near the far sideline. Gets the ball into the hands now of Dylan Banks, who can't find his shot because Osborne was right there. Baldwin returns the ball to Banks. Banks still trying to get an open shot, can't do it. Baldwin, spin move, gets inside, lost the ball. Picked off by Todd Woods, who gets it quickly ahead to Jackson Fields for a two-hand slam. And as you can tell, we don't have a whole lot of fans here. You know, it's holiday time. It's the third place game of the Vipe Invitational Tournament. And it's uh, not quite like being in an AAU gym on a Saturday, but almost. Baldwin with a putback of a missed three-pointer. His teammate Sabian Smith just into the game. Missed it, but Baldwin there to clean up. Now Chris Johnson gets a pick from Fields. Free throw line jumper comes up short. Baldwin taps the rebound, and it ends up in the hands of Sabian Smith. Now it's Burks who is running things at point guard, sends the ball to Davis, goes through the free throw circle. Another one of those floaters. He's been very good with those and knocks it in to make it 32 to 21 and don't look now, but Crosby is closing in. They've cut the lead to 11 points. There goes Chris Johnson. Little jump step move, a Euro step. And into the lane and he draws a foul. He'll go to the line.
Johnson uh, wearing the salmon colored socks today. And uh, off white shoes that are trimmed in Miami Dolphins aqua. His first free throw goes in, hit the front iron and just crawled over very smoothly. It's now 33 to 21 nights. Chris will get one more. We'll have Matt Malatesta for our halftime interview coming up after we play these final, well, wait a minute. We're down to 31 seconds. It's easy to lose track of times in these games. Yep, less than half a minute to go. Here goes Osborne. And now there is a Bones Jones shot. It comes up no good. Chris Johnson with 16 seconds to go. Hesitates near the foul line. Lays it up no good. And a fight for the rebound and all kinds of pinball action. But Crosby ends up with it. And Dylan Banks shoots or gets it to Woods. Bones Jones and he scores. And uh, the buzzer went a little bit early, but now it went for good. So after that flurry of chaotic action in the final 30 seconds of quarter number two, the Knights lead it by a score of 34 to 23. We'll be right back with Matt Malatesta on BikeFortMen.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Welcome to Halftime. Glad you're with us on VibeFortBend.com, and it's time to talk to Matt Malatesta, the managing editor. Did I get the title right? Of yes. Vibe and World Headquarters and so forth? You got it. Well, one thing that I've noticed, I always like to watch Todd Freed's program, H-Town High School Sports, which comes on CW39 and also AT&T Sportsnet, and it's powered by Vipe. And one of the recent editions, you talked about early National Signing Day, but there's still plenty to talk about coming up when the other National Signing Day is coming up. So what are some of the things that you're most... Um, some mysteries that maybe you're you're looking forward to finding out where different athletes go. Well, I tell you what, it's yeah, much of the hay is already in the barn. We've got a couple of guys left. Harold Perkins is one. He's from Cy Park, so we're not sure where he's going to end up. But that will come soon enough, probably this weekend. But other than that, you know, there's just a lot of Division One, Division Two type guys that are trying to figure out with all the coaching movement where they're going to fit in, and you know what schools have interest in them. The portal has totally changed recruiting. And it's really tough for kids that are in high school now because they're battling transfers, A, you know, to like a Sam Houston. Sam Houston is a great example. <laughs> Sam Houston's going to take a ton of transfers where that used to be wide open for high school players in the city of Houston to go to. So you're going to see a lot of that, um, you know, moving around. So my advice to high school kids that get offered don't be afraid to commit because you want to hold your space. But there will be a few trickle in in the later signing day, but mostly it's already done. You know, it seems like it's almost kind of a, I don't know, maybe a, a high school version of what I started to see in the 90s. I lived out in El Paso, and Neil McCarthy was the head basketball coach of New Mexico State. And they were, sometimes he got criticized for kind of reworking his team with JUCOs every year, but that's just kind of what became the way of the world. We saw John Calipari basically perfect it in Kentucky basketball, but it's also going to be true in football, I suppose, now too. Am I right? Yeah, and Kansas State used to be great at that. Um, when Bill they used Snyder. To, Bill Snyder used to do so much um, recruiting the JUCO landscape. Now, you could just virtually 
recruit the portal and not even recruit high school kids. Um, Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss has kind of taken that route. He signed maybe three or four kids in early signing day, and now he's just recruiting the portal. By the way, as you were talking about that, the reason uh, they didn't see it on radio, but but I smiled because it almost seems like it's a dating site. You know, just kind of uh, people and institutions can let everybody know that they are available. <laughs> they are. And what's funny is I think Wyoming was the school which actually put an ad in the New York Times looking for a quarterback. I mean, that, you know, that says it all. But, you know, the movement, I don't love it. Um, I think there has to be some sort of reboot of how this is going to work. So we'll see how it plays out. Well, I'm like you in that I don't love it. You know, I kind of like things. You know, I, I grew up when you could think about a team's lineup in whatever sport, and it kind of stayed the same for a good five, six, seven years, and you knew who all the players were. I know that's not going to change, but uh, let, me, let me throw this question at you before we wrap this up. I know that uh, here in Texas we're very proud. People who went to big universities in Texas are, are proud of their team, and, man, they, it just galls them when, when they can't get over on the others. The Texas A&M football recruiting class was just astronomically good, even at early National Signing Day. And, you know, it's been 1939 since the Aggies have actually won a national football championship. Do you think in two or three years, based on what they have coming in, that maybe they can get that done? Well, being an LSU fan, it's, you know, your fingers crossed that they don't. But what Jimbo Fisher has built, and you're seeing what they're doing, they're building with the offensive defensive line first. This is, this is a historic moment for them because they're the number one class likely as it relates to all the recruiting sites and they filled needs really important needs up front in the trenches and i think you know the A aggies are dying for this they're dying they really really foresee them winning a national championship in a couple of years but how much pressure does that put on jimbo fisher if he doesn't win a national championship in a couple of years, but I think their offensive and defensive line are be spectacular. I think Connor Wigman could be really, really special as a quarterback. They've got skilled guys, but here's the other thing. The portal can bring us bring a team down because not everybody can play. That's right. There's only eleven guys on the exactly. field at each time. Exactly. So somebody's gonna be disgruntled and how they manage that is gonna be very interesting. But they're set up for success if there ever was in the history of the state of Texas, UT used to do this, you know, they they would be crowned, you know, the national championship, national champions for recruiting in February. They got it done one time. Let's see if a can do it. I think they can. They got the resources. Now the target is going to be massive on Jimbo Fisher's back to deliver them a national championship. All right. Well, basketball half times are short. I wish they were like football. Half no, I don't wish they were like football half times. But if they were, we'd have more time to talk. Thanks, Matt, for being with us, and Happy New Year. Roger, you are killing it at Fort Bend, the voice of Fort Bend. Thanks so much for all you do for Vipe, and uh, we'll see you down the road. My pleasure, sir. All right, we'll be back. Become a Vipe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe news throughout the entire year subscribe today what are you waiting for it's less than a cup of coffee a month become a vibe insider $2.99 a month $23.99 for the whole year hey it's vibe we will see you at the games the first tire and automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these merry christmas of savings 10 percent off any and all repairs or 15 dollars off an oil change head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings first tire and automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years getting you to and from the game always make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in sugarland and cinco ranch all four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Crosby gets the ball first in the first in the third quarter, moving from left to right. 
And they get the ball in bounds to Zacchaeus Davis. Drives the right baseline and runs out of room. Now kicks it back out to Kevin Burks. Now they whip it around the perimeter and it's Baldwin. Guarded by Fields in the left corner. Can't find anything right now. Now gets it to Jones. Now gets the ball to Burks who drives the right restraining line and swatted away into the front row of the cheap seats along the, the court baseline. Jackson Fields. He can block a lot of shots. Now quickly in, it's Dylan Banks. He tries to drive the baseline. Now it's a little give and go, working it to Jones. Baby hook good from three feet away. And it's now a one digit lead, 34 to 25. The Knights on top of the Crosby Cougars. Chris Johnson stops at the free throw line. A little no look pass inside, too hot for Fields to handle. And I think uh, maybe Jones got a hand on it for Crosby and the Cougars steal it away. Now it is Davis who moves to the top of the key. Now the free throw line, a little scoop from the left, no good. Jones grabs the rebound, out battle Barnett to get it, and the putback is good. We're suddenly got us a seven point game. 34 to 27. Chris Johnson, now Jackson Fields, now McKenzie massaging the ball and gives the ball up quickly to Justin Mitchell. Chris Johnson, three pointer from the left wing, missed badly to the left. And Crosby trailing by only seven, gets the ball back. Baldwin has it between the rings. Now he gives the ball up to Davis and they start to work their offensive movement. Baldwin has it near the left elbow and he's gonna go ahead and shoot one from three point land but he missed everything. And the ball bounces out of bounds. Westfield and Atascacita will be in the championship final of this tournament right after this game. We got a timeout taken, we'll take it with them. This is VibeFortBend.com. 34-27, Elkins leading Crosby, 6.29 to go in the third. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity, 600 megabits per second to at and 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Coming out of the timeout, Elkins comes up empty on a possession. Ashton McKenzie misses a three-pointer. And I think Chris Johnson stepped on the baseline as he got the rebound of the miss. So it's Crosby trailing only by seven, and they're playing without P.J. Haggerty, their star. So there is Jones from the top of the key. Rainbow three-pointer barely grazed the rim. And the rebound, Johnson to the Knights. There he goes. Sends it off in the left corner. Getting the ball to Justin Mitchell, can't find his shot. Now Jackson Fields from the left, no good. Barnett, the rebound, tries again, but fouled as he goes back up. Christopher Barnett stands 6'5", so the Knights with eight players on their varsity roster who are 6'3 or taller. Before this tournament started, they were averaging over 63 points a game and giving up less than 50. First free throw by Barnett, in and out, no good. Baldwin goes out for Crosby, and that's because he just committed his fourth foul. And Darius Jefferson comes in to replace him. Barnett will get one more. 5.46 to go in the third, takes his time. Spins it. Maybe taking a little bit too much time between free throws and... Uh, I think he simply took too much time. So he got the ball up in the air and does not count. 34 to 27 is still our score and Crosby with it. When I get a timeout, um, I might ask one of the officials if that's what happened, if he simply took too much time to release the ball. Steal by the Knights. Chris Johnson takes it away. 
goes around his defensive man, that being Darius Jefferson, and rolls it off the glass into the hoop to make it 36 to 27. The lead is back up to nine. Davis sends it over on the left side to Burks. Burks moves to the top of the key, kills his dribble. Underhand pass, getting it over to Jefferson. Now to Bones Jones. Entry pass, Jones gets it back. Free throw line jumper, short and off the side and rebound taken by Johnson. Down the right sideline he goes, ahead to McKenzie. McKenzie, a little underhand pass to Fields but stolen away by Jones. And now there goes Burks all the way to the hoop. And Burke scores to make it a seven-point game again, 36-29. to 29. Crosby hanging in there. Long pass to Jackson Fields. Now back out to Johnson. Cross court, gets the ball to Mitchell. McKenzie in the corner, eyeing the hoop. Now steps back. Now it's Mitchell. Top of the key, three. No good. Rebound, Fields. And it looks like we got a loose ball foul. They call it on Jones. Substitutions for the Knights. Jacoby Osborne and Darrell Wilson come into the game. And McKenzie and Barnett go to the bench. Darrell Wilson, his first action in this game, 6-7. And got a lot of time in varsity games for the Knights last year. Johnson now in the right corner. Fakes the three, drives to the hoop, sends it to Fields in the opposite corner. Now Osborne, a little baby hook from inside. Hooks it over Jones and into the hoop. 38 to 29, the lead is back to nine points. Davis launches a three, nobody covered him, but it's one and done as the shot misses and Jackson Fields clears the glass. Gives the ball to Johnson, between the feet dribble, now sends it to Osborne, right corner three, no good. Rebound grabbed by Sabian Smith of Crosby. Here comes Davis. Osborne guarding him right in front of our table on VipeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County sports. Now there's a pass inside to Jones, off the window, no good. Rebounds his miss and goes to the other side and scores. It's 38 to 31. Crosby can't seem to get past that seven point barrier. Johnson, right wing, three on the way, good. Now the lead is up to 10. 41 to 31, Knights lead it. 3.18 to go in the third quarter. Zacchaeus Davis talking to his teammates as he walks the roll across the timeline. Jones should have been called for a moving pick. Now he has the basketball. He's guarded by Wilson. Ball now in the hands of Jefferson. And now he sends it to the corner and a jumper no good by Banks. Fight for the rebound. Jackson Fields cleans it up. Gets the ball to Johnson. Johnson driving in on a much smaller opponent, Jefferson. Now it's Osborne along the left baseline. Strong inside move over Jones, scoring to make it 43 to 31. The Knights lead has grown back to 12. Five straight points for Elkins. Davis trying to get around Osborne, stands between the rings dribbling, now gives the ball up to Banks near the left sideline. Bo Jones bounces it back outside to Davis and a shot swatted away by Fields but it ends up in Jones's hands. Three on the way, no good. Johnson grabs the rebound for Elkins. Quickly down the floor he comes. Fakes the three, drives in, gets the ball to Wilson and an easy layup. A nice assist for Chris Johnson and Darrell Wilson is in the scorebook. That basket makes it 45-31. Timeout Crosby, 2.04 to go in the third. This is VikeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. 
I got a clarification on something that happened earlier, and I was thinking that maybe one of the Knights players had just simply taken too long before shooting a foul shot. But that's, he almost took too long, but what actually happened was one of his Knights teammates just stepped into the lane. It was your ordinary lane violation as a player of the shooting team stepped across the restraining line along the side of the free throw lane too early. And that's why the Knights didn't get credit for that free throw. So, 14-point lead. Knights on top. They have scored seven straight. Now Zacchaeus Davis of Crosby moves it into the forecourt. Gives the ball to Dylan Banks, who thinks about a three. Drives into the lane. Gives it up. Now Jones has it. He gives the ball to Jefferson. Jefferson gets a pick from Jones. Can't get free. Now gets the ball back in the hands of Banks. Banks with a spin move around McKenzie. Puts it up. Ball partially blocked in the rebound. Comes down to Johnson of the Elkins Knights. And a long pass that's intercepted by Jefferson of Crosby. And the Cougars still have it, trailing by 14. Zacchaeus Davis running the offense, gets a pick. Thought about a three, gets the ball to Jones. He launches a three, and he misses everything again. He either needs to work on his threes or stop shooting them. Chris Johnson into the lane he goes. And there's contact, and Chris Johnson draws a foul, but it was on the floor, not while shooting. They get Darius Jefferson. That's just his first foul. Into Darrell Wilson, back to Chris Johnson. Easy layup, good over the much shorter Zacchaeus Davis. And that grows the lead to 47 to 31. It's now a nine nothing run for the Knights. Davis guarded by the much larger Wilson. Thinking about the three, didn't take it. Jones, cross court pass, gets the ball to Burks. Now they send it to Banks. Now they're working the left side. Jones to the top of the key, gets it to Davis, gets a pick back to Jones. Lost the handle on it, gets the ball back to Burks. Little scoop shot, and it goes. It counts for Kevin Burks, who got a good hip check going through the paint. And that'll count to make it 47 to 35. And he will go to the line. Correction, it's 47 to 33. And he's going to the line with 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. He makes that foul shot and completes the three-point play. So it's 47-34, Knights on top. Maybe the Knights will play for the final shot. Johnson sends the ball to Todd Woods on the left wing. Back to Johnson, back to Woods. Now it's McKenzie, thinks about the three, passes it up. Now Johnson shoots, that's a three. That makes it 50 to 34 with 18 seconds to go. Crosby taking their time, getting it across the midcourt stripe. Now Coach Egans tells them to hurry up. There goes Davis, lost the ball, but Jefferson picks it up. Now Burks drives the baseline. He, he runs into a double team. They might be running out of time. Two seconds left, and Jefferson. The buzzer goes. He's still on the floor with the ball in his hands, and great defense by the Elkins Knights to close out this third quarter. And they outscore the Crosby Cougars by 20 to four over the last couple of minutes of quarter number three. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com with the final eight minutes of action right after this. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent with over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com the Knights get it first to start the fourth quarter. Osborne to inbound from the near sideline. 
There's a little discussion. I don't know what it's about. Doesn't matter. And we have started the fourth quarter as Todd Woods dribbles the ball. Now gets it to McKenzie. Osborne in the free throw circle. Inside Darrell Wilson. Easy layup. Nice assist there. And it's now 52 to 34 nights by 18 against the Crosby Cougars who do not have P.J. Haggerty today. There goes Burks, stops on the left, restraining line, shoots over Johnson, no good. Jones the rebound, working hard, puts up a shot, no good. Burks grabs the rebound, and a foul on the floor against one of the Knights. It might be Jeffrey Iro. Burks to inbound, looking, looking, looking. Gets it into Davis, and a shot blocked by uh, Osborne is a three-point attempt by Burks. And the Knights come away with it, leading by 18. Osborne, left corner, passed up the three, drove to the hoop, finger rolled it a little bit short, and Crosby gets the rebound. Jefferson comes ahead, quickly ahead to Davis, and Johnson, I think, altered the shot. It was missed. Darius Jefferson does get the rebound. Cougars continue to possess the ball, and Burks misses a three, and now the rebound to Johnson and the Knights, and it's three on two. Quickly in as McKenzie scores on the assist from Johnson. 54 to 34. Zacchaeus Davis trying to get past Iro, can't do it, sends it to Burks in the corner, drives the baseline. Johnson cuts him off, he backs up. Now he bounces the ball off of Johnson's leg just to get a better opportunity. He was really trapped in the corner there. Fifty-four to thirty-four. The Knights leading by twenty for the first time in today's game. Sabian Smith has entered the game for the Cougars. Burks bounces it into Davis, guarded by Osborne. Tries to get a pick from Jones. And Iro now picks up Davis. Burks has it guarded by Johnson. And there is a pass that uh, got away from Dylan Banks almost. Jones saves it, sends it back to Banks, launches the three, no good. Sabian Smith the rebound. And Jones, a jumper from the left elbow, no good. Sabian Smith grabs the put back and puts it over Osborne. The lead is back down to 18, 54-36. Now Johnson on the right wing, gets the ball to Woods, standing between the rings. Now McKenzie, they work the perimeter, trying to pull out that zone defense. And now there's a McKenzie three-pointer on the way and good. I think that was a good 30 feet. And that makes it a 21-point game, 57-36. to 36. Back at the other end, three-point attempt in and out by Banks. And here come the Knights on the rebound. Johnson, top of the key, launches the three, in and out, no good. Rebound Sabian Smith for Crosby. Hounded in the backport, but gets it to Davis. Davis across the timeline, knifing through defenders, puts up another floater, and this one goes down good. And a timeout taken by Crosby, 57 to 38, Knights on top, 5.14 to go. We shall return. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Back for the last five plus minutes of the game. Osborne in the free throw circle for the night sends it out to Mitchell who's fouled on the three point attempt. Sabian Smith came out and made contact 
and the officials call the foul. So Justin Mitchell, the 5'8 sophomore guard, will go to the line. We're at the Campbell Center in Aldine where the Class 5A Region 3 boys tournament will happen. Crosby has been a part of the mix in recent years, but uh, they're a little outmanned today, and they don't have their main man, P.J. Haggerty, the former Ridgepoint Panther. And Mitchell misses the first two of his three free throws. I guess you're really old if you remember in the NBA when they had a thing called three to make two. Kind of slowed the game down, so they got rid of it. But the third free throw is good by Mitchell, and that makes it 58 to 38. Davis working hard, sends it to Burks, all the way over in the corner to Sabian Smith, trapped there by Woods, trying to get away, bounce pass to Baldwin. Baldwin back on the floor, he's got four fouls, backing in, and he draws a foul, and Iroh gets him. Jeffrey Iroh, a senior, stands 6'4". That foul was on the floor, and the Knights are not over the limit, so quick inbounds pass and an air ball three-pointer, Dylan Banks, and there goes Woods at the other end. Sabian Smith catches up to him, makes contact, foul called as the shot was missed. Todd Woods went over to the head coach, Albert Thomas, and talked to him a moment. And they said, hey, we, we can't continue this game unless you go to the free throw circle. Well, that's not what Coach Thomas said. It's, I'm sure that's what somebody on the court said. Might have even been an official as the first free throw is missed. Todd Woods, a, a much better foul shooter than this. He's just having an off day. That one goes in. Nothing but net, in fact. And it's 59-38. to 38. The lead is 21. That matches the biggest advantage that the Knights have enjoyed in this game. There goes Davis. Stops near the left elbow, pulls the ball up, gives it to Baldwin, thinks about the three, gives the ball to Burks. Back to Davis, gets a pick from Baldwin, then drives inside the arc, and Iroh is right there on defense, and the ball slipped out of Davis's hands, and Iroh thought that maybe Crosby had last touched it, but the official ruled that Iroh of Elkins made contact. Now Davis has it in the corner, dribbling to his right, kills it, now sends it to Smith. Now around the horn they go. Here goes Burks. Stops near the free throw line. McKenzie right there on him. Baldwin. He's got Iroh right in front of him. Top of the key. Drives the paint. Pulls up. Kicks it back out to Sabian Smith who is blocked by Woods. The ball lands out of bounds. So it'll still be Crosby ball. But 5'9 Todd Woods with a pretty solid shot block. Burks inbounds it to Baldwin. Baldwin gets it back to Burks, right in front of the Crosby bench. McKenzie is on Burks. Little rub off pick by Baldwin, gets the ball back, sends it in the corner. Davis now kicks it back out. Baldwin has it now on the left wing. Backs in, tries to get over Osborne, off the back iron, no good. Baldwin rebounds his miss. Back out to Davis, three on the way, good. 59 to 41. Knight still comfortably ahead with three and a half minutes to go. There goes Osborne right through the lane. Euro stepped to the left and laid it off the glass for two. 61 to 41. Here comes Davis quickly back down the floor. The pace is quickening here, even though we have kind of a one-sided game, and there's an air ball by Davis. Shot it from 30 and shot it about 28 feet. 61 to 41. The sounding of the short buzzer means that Troy Mouton is coming in for Elkins. And he replaces Todd Woods. Let's see, we got Van Lynch, Darrell Wilson, Osborne, the aforementioned Trey Mouton, who launches a three. The first time he gets into the game, it's no good. But Darrell Wilson there for the rebound and the putback. And the Knights' lead is now 22, 63 to 41. There goes Burks, and he is blocked by Wilson. And it's out ahead to Osborne, all the way to the hoop, tried the dunk, and it snapped off the collapsible rim and shot up into the air, and the ball goes out of bounds. It will belong to Crosby. 
Another substitution for the Knights, Jaron Hardeman. This is the first time we've seen him in the second half. So we got Hardeman, Lynch, Mitchell, Wilson, and Mouton on the floor for the Knights, who lead it by 22. Davis has the ball for Crosby. Gets it into Baldwin, but he's a long way from the hoop and guarded closely by Mouton. Davis now has it, looking for a pick. Behind the back dribble to try and get away from Van Lynch. Now along the baseline, Baldwin backing in, trying to get around Mouton. Meets a double team. Davis, three from the top of the key and good. Crosby closes the gap now. It is 63 to 44. They trail by 19. Back at the other end, Van Lynch answers the three with one of his own. And the lead is back up to 66 to 44. We've under two minutes to go. Davis, hot bounce pass and one of those intended for Jones, but he hit him on the toenails with it. And so that's hard to catch that kind of pass, especially when you're tall like Austin Bones Jones, who stands 6'5". Jaron Hardeman, running point for the Knights, wearing very handsome gold uniforms today with the royal blue numerals outlined in white. There is Justin Mitchell trying to make a move near the baseline, and he gets it to Darrell Wilson. Backdoor layup is good. Lead is now 24, 68 to 44. Burks, from an impossible angle, shoots over Mouton, and Mouton commits a foul. So two shots coming for Kevin Burks. Crosby also has another familiar player named Kyron Miles who has not had any action today. Sean Elkington was in the game early for the Cougars and it's been quite a while since we've seen him. All right, both free throws good, 68-46. Crosby trying to Make it look a little bit better at the end of the game. And now Davis, a breakaway steal and goes in for a layup. That'll make the score look a little bit better for Crosby. It trails 68 to 46. And they are pressing, but here comes Van Lynch into the forecourt. Drives around his man, gets it to Wilson. Nice little dime dropped by Van Lynch. And Darrell Wilson is pushing double figures here in the late going. Last minute of the game, 70 to 46. Knights on top, they lead by 26. And there's a nice little follow shot by Davis after a miss by Baldwin. Here come the Knights, and it is Mouton with a three on the way in. Good. 73 to 48. And Darrell Wilson deflects a pass. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by Crosby. The Knights will get it back for the final 26.3. Wilson inbounds it to Jaron Hardeman, and we'll see if the Knights take another shot. Van Lynch back to Hardeman. And he's dribbling. The clock is now at 12. Cross-court pass to Wilson. Knights offense is spread way, way out. I don't think they're going to shoot it again. Just dribbling out the clock is Jaron Hardeman. And there you have it. The Knights win it by a score of 73 to 50. We'll be back to wrap this one up on VibeFortBend.com. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Plus, you'll save hundreds over AT&T. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. 
Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to AT&T 500 megabits per second, each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 621. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. The First Tire and Automotive family wishes you happy holidays with these Merry Christmas of savings. 10% off any and all repairs or $15 off an oil change. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive has supported school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You work hard, so you deserve the good things in life, like getting an amazing deal on awesome internet. That's why there's never been a better time to switch to Xfinity. Get the fast and reliable internet you deserve for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And ask how to score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. Just imagine, faster downloads, more streaming, the possibilities are endless. Or learn how to get a $200 prepaid card when you get gig speed internet during the Xfinity Black Friday sales event. That means powering a house full of devices when everyone's home this holiday season. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now because you deserve awesome internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 621. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Reduce speeds up to 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Roger Smith with you again here on VipeFortBend.com as the Elkins Knights win third place in the Vipe Invitational Tournament. Taking today's game over Crosby by a score of 73 to 50. Chris Johnson with 19 points to lead the way for the Knights. And it was Osborne. Jacoby Osborne scored 10. He was the second highest point total. And while I'm talking to you on the floor here at the Campbell Center at Aldine ISD, you've got the Atascacita Eagles and the Westfield Mustangs preparing to play the championship game of this tournament. Westfield is the team that defeated the Knights by two and uh, kept the Knights from getting first place. But you know, third place in a tournament with this many quality teams is not bad, not bad at all. So good job to the Knights. And I also meant, already mentioned that Chris Johnson led the way with the 19 and Jacoby Osborne had 10. And we'll tell you what we've got in store for you for the rest of the year, meaning the calendar year 20 to 21, uh, 2021. So tomorrow in the morning at 10.30, we'll have the Austin girls hosting a -Leaf Hastings. And I have learned that because these are non-district games and it's holiday time and there are a few circumstances that can uh, jump up and bite you once in a while. 
Um, there isn't a chance uh, that I should probably just say these games are subject subject to change without notice, okay? That can happen. So uh, Austin girls against Aleaf Hastings, I certainly hope will be coming your way at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. And then on New Year's Eve day, which is uh, Friday, 10.30 in the morning, the Katy girls are taking on Bush. That could be a playoff preview, should be an outstanding game, and we'll bring you that one. And then at 1 o'clock, it's the Travis boys hosting Seven Lakes. That, too, could be a playoff preview. So the Elkins Knights, along with the Travis Tigers and the Bush Broncos and the Ridge Point Panthers, are the teams that are 1-0 in District 26A play. And District 26A play will resume one week from today on January the 5th. And we will have games for you every Tuesday and every Friday and a few Wednesdays worked in there too. We're going to be busy with games two, sometimes three, or maybe even four times a week. And we are happy to do that because we are your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. So I hope that you will join us for the Austin girls game tomorrow against Aleve Hastings or the Bush girls game against Katie on Friday morning or early Friday afternoon for the Travis Tigers boys game against Seven Lakes. But if you don't join us again the rest of the year 2021, we say goodbye and God bless. And for Josh Cargyle, Merle Bertrand, and the entire VipeFortBend.com team, we thank you so much for joining us. Again, our final score, the Elkins Knights 73 and the Crosby Cougars 50. Roger Smith saying goodbye from the Campbell Center, and we will talk to you tomorrow morning or Friday morning, or Friday afternoon, or in 2022. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>